listing carefully on the title or message that I title here, Shama the word. Here or Shama the word. Shama is here. Here. Hear the word of Yahweh. Now, there is consequences for not hearing the word of Yahweh. We have texts in the scriptures that will help us on your own. Read it. We are not going to read them. We've read some of them when we are, you know, discussing um, when we began this uh, uh, Shabbat this morning. Deuteronomy chapter 6, 1 to 5. Deuteronomy 7, 1 to 7. Psalm 106, 19 to 28. Leviticus 18, 1 to 6. Deuteronomy 30, 1 to 20. Isaiah 66, verse 5 and verse 14. Matthew 13 and verse 20. We are going to touch some of them in a bit. Let's look at something that he told, the warning. Because that is exactly what I was trying to narrate a while ago. He warned them, when you enter that land, do not behave the way you behaved in Egypt. Do not replicate the character of Egypt in that land. Because the people in the, the, that land, they do the same thing that Egyptians were doing. So possess my character, possess my way of life, and enthrone righteousness in the land. Thank you. Now, let's Thank listen you. to him That's in Deuteronomy right. chapter 7. What's my name? Yeah. Deuteronomy yeah. chapter yeah. 7. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 7. Somebody has omitted himself. Please mute yourself. You are hearing me? If we're in the house now, we should leave whatever we are doing and pay attention. Please, we, shall not, we are not supposed to be working. We are not supposed to be doing anything. I don't know why that noise is coming about or, or to us here. It's not good. Now, let's listen. Deuteronomy chapter 7, I read from verse 1. When Yahweh, your father, brings you into the land which you go to possess, that is that land of Canaan, and has cast out many nations before you, the Hittites, and the Gigashites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater than, than and mightier than you. And when Yahweh, your father, delivers them over to you, you shall, you shall conquer them and utterly destroy them. You shall make no covenant with them, nor show mercy to them, nor shall you make marriages with them. You shall not give your daughter to their son, nor take their daughter for yourself, for they will turn your sons away from following me to serve other gods. So the anger of Yahweh will be aroused against you and destroy you suddenly. But thus you shall deal with them. You shall destroy their altars and break down their sacred pillars and cut down their wooden images and burn down their carved images with fire. For you are a holy people. You see, Yahweh has separated them. Yahweh has made them holy. Yahweh has made them his own. They're supposed to have a certain character, a pure character, quality, the character that has to do with the mindset of Yahweh, the way of Yahweh, and it has to do with all about righteousness. They have to live a righteous life. So that's what Yahweh is saying here. They are righteous people. They are holy people. To Yahweh, their father, Yahweh, your father has chosen you to be a people for himself, a special treasure above all the people's on the face of the earth. This is exactly the reason why Yahweh was doing what he was doing. This is exactly the reason Yahweh said, clear those people because they have overlived their usefulness. They are a wastage to their generations and to their lives. They are corruptors of men and mankind, all that Yahweh has made. They will go. Yahweh determined they will go. 
all species, all creatures, everything is Yahweh's. He determines what he wants to leave or stay or not to stay. Whatever that is not good will not be in the land that Yahweh enthroned to be good. When Yahweh sanctify a land and say that land is good land, a blessed land, a righteous land, anybody living in that land, if it's not holy, if not righteous, he will call the person off. No matter what you think about Yahweh, that is the, the person because, I mean, if you own a house, you determine the type of tenant that will be there. I mean, you give the condition. So Yahweh is the owner. How will we query Yahweh? How will we judge Yahweh? Do not do that. Because the person is even attracting judgment upon himself. The person is querying the hand of Yahweh. It's like Jeremiah telling them, why would you choose to call yourself uh, 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 uh. You who is declared, choose to determine or to, to, to show to the porter how he, you are going to be molded or how to. No, 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 no. You have, don't have to dictate. Yahweh is our father, our ruler, our guide. He owns the earth and he gave it to us by his gracious love, by his love, such excellent, wonderful love. He handed the earth to us. Why would we rubbish it? He says, this is the way you are going to live in this earth. He is the landlord. We are tenants. But when we do what he wants us to do, we become sons and daughters. We become heir of Yahweh. We become righteous people, holy people. We become children of Yahweh. That is what Yahweh has done in Psalm chapter 8 and Psalm 82. I mean, that is clear. Yahweh, David made it clear. Yahweh, David said, why, why do you so love them so much? You so love mankind who are little, greater, lower than gods, lower than, 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 than Elohims. They are Elohims, but they are created a little lower than the Elohims. That's the angels. But then, even as lower as they were created, as, you know, a little bit insignificant as it were, you so love them that you give them the whole dominion, rulership, power to rule, you know, authority to rule, to control the earth, to control everything that Yahweh made. That he even gave him, gave man or mankind what glory and honor above the angels. Do you know that what that was that was what touched uh, Satan or Lucifer that he said, Oh, so this man that is a little lower than, you know, that is small, that is insignificant, he will rule over me. He will control everything. No, 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 no. That's why he dealt de with Adam and Eve. But then did Yahweh not want Adam and Eve? On and on and on and on, Yahweh won Adam and Eve. If you are not careful, you will go down. If you do not obey, if you eat the seed of disobedience, then you will go down. Another will take over. That was it. But Adam and Eve, they didn't listen. Eventually they fell. So here, Yahweh was warning Israel, you are special species. You are holy. You are special treasure. You are my righteous people. You are my holy set apart people. Therefore, don't behave the way you behaved in Egypt. Don't introduce that behavior in the land where you are going because it's a holy land. When you clear those people, that place is going to be holy. Don't introduce unrighteousness in there. And do, you yourself do not become unrighteous people or persons. I will not tolerate that from you. If you do so, I will clear you as I will clear those people from their face. And you will be wiped out. Verse 7, in that Deuteronomy 7, verse 7 says, Yahweh did not set his love on you, Israel, yeah nor choose you because you we are more in number than any other people for you we are the least of all peoples but because Yahweh loves you and because he would keep the oath which he swore to your fathers you see Yahweh remembers the oath he swore with Abraham he went to keep that oath he went to maintain his word so how he told Abraham, his descendant will come back and inherit the land and occupy it, and that place will be a holy land. The same way he tried to walk into the ears and the heart of 
the children of Israel so that they will internalize his word and go in there and live accordingly. But that was not to be. Yahweh has brought you out with the mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of bondage, from the hand of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Therefore, know that Yahweh, your father, he is Yahweh, the faithful Yahweh, who keeps covenant and show mercy to a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandments. So he was telling them they must keep his commandments. They must follow his instructions. They must follow his rule. If they fail, he will cut them off. He will cut them off. And if they keep his commandments, he told them, you are going to be blessed. Look at that verse 13. Let's, let's read it from even from that 11 there. Therefore, you shall keep the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which I command you today to observe them. This is the instruction he was giving them in the wilderness. They must keep it. They must follow it or they will be cut off. Then it shall come to pass because you listened to these instructions and keep and do them that Yahweh your father will keep you, will keep with you the covenant and the mercy which he swore to your fathers. And he will love you and bless you and multiply you. He will also bless the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your land, your grain and your new wine and your oil, the increase of your cattle and the offering of, of your flock in the land of which he has sworn to you to give to you as he sworn to, the, to give it to the fathers. Sorry, let me take that. Which he sworn to your fathers to give you. You shall be blessed among all peoples. There shall not be a male or female barren among you or among your livestock. Is he a lion? Is he a liar? Why is some of the children of Israel, like their daughters, their men, why are they barren? Because they have failed. Because they have failed. Because they are not hearing Yahweh. They always say they, they will not be barren in the land. Because the holy land, and they are holy. So how would they be barren? Now verse 15. And Yahweh will take away from you all sickness and will afflict you with none of the terrible diseases of Egypt, which you have known, but we lay them on all those who hate you. And also you shall destroy all the peoples from whom Yahweh, your father, delivers over to you. You see, destruction of those people is the making of Yahweh. Yahweh will deliver them to them to, delete, to destroy. They are not doing it themselves. They don't have the power. They don't have the capacity. When they entered into that land of a truth, Joshua chapter 5, we are told that Yahshua entered that land and he saw Joshua. And he said to Joshua, if I Joshua walked towards him and said, who are you? Are you for us or are you against us? I said to him, I am the capital of Yahweh's army. I have come to deliver this land as was promised by Yahweh onto your hand. So that what Yahweh said concerning you and the land will commence. You are going to be holy. The land is going to be holy. These people are going to be flushed out. I have come to do that, to do that delivering of the land onto your hand. That is exactly what happened. So it's Yahweh that commissioned them to clear those people because they were, they were holy people. They were righteous people. They do all manner of things. They sacrifice their sons and daughters. They pour blood on the floor, on the ground of Yahweh, which is holy. Yahweh is unacceptable. It's in their blood to do. That was, they worship wood and stone. Baal is unacceptable before Yahweh. And there's no way Yahweh will, you know, save them because they're unsavable. They were people who had made themselves to follow. They binded They said they had a covenant with Satan. So Yahweh said, wipe them out. So, so your eyes shall have no pity on them, nor shall you serve their gods or their idols. For, for that will be a snare unto you. If you should say in your heart, these nations are greater than we or I, how can I dispossess them? You 
shall not afraid of them, but you shall remember well that Yahweh your father did what Yahweh your father did to Pharaoh and to all Egypt. On and on, he continued speaking to them in that Deuteronomy chapter, you know, seven. My, now let us look at again what Yahweh said to them about the land again. When they will enter into that land, how they are going to live or behave themselves so that they will not corrupt themselves. Let's turn to um, Leviticus. Leviticus chapter Leviticus chapter 18. Leviticus chapter 18. I want to read from verse 1. Then Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and said to them, I am Yahweh your father. According to the doings of the land of Egypt, listen to this particular point clearly. According to the doings, what was the doings of, uh, uh, of Egypt? They were doing the same thing these Canaanites were doing. They were shedding blood at will. Impunity was in them in their land. Iniquity was committed. Lawlessness was their way. They had no respect. They, 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 they didn't know the way of Yahweh. So the way of righteousness was out of the way. They were doing their own. They were completely Gentile. So do not follow that way of the Gentile you have learned in Egypt. Don't go and replicate that in the land of Canaan because it's going to be a holy land. So according to the doings of the land of Egypt, where you dwelt, you shall not do. And according to the doings of the land of Canaan, where I am bringing you, you shall not do, nor shall you walk in their ordinances. Do not follow their law, their ordinances, their way of life. Do not replicate what we are doing in Egypt, because but Egypt and Canaan, they are, they are Gentile. The whole Gentile will do the same thing because they are under one father, Satan. You shall observe my judgments and keep my ordinances to walk in them. I am Yahweh, your father. See, this is the reason he took them to the wilderness to teach them his ordinances, to teach them the, the judgment, to teach them the status of Yahweh, to teach them the commandments of Yahweh, to teach them his word so that they will become righteous people. They will be set apart people. They will be holy people. They will be people that not like the other people of the world or Gentiles of the world. You shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if man a man does, he shall live by them. I am Yahweh. None of you shall approach anyone who is near of kin to him and all that. So Yahweh, yeah, when you read it, you, you, you begin to hear about the nakedness, nakedness which we read earlier. Immorality shall not be part of them. Sin of, of the Gentiles, stealing, lying, covetousness, wickedness, killing, shedding of blood will not be part of them. They will not go that way. All that they learned in Egypt, they should drop it in the wilderness. But the more Yahweh teach them, the more they developed wings. The more they rebelled, the more unbelief settles in them. And that unbelief, they used, the, even the children that were born in the wilderness that entered the land of Canaan, carried that unbelief into that land. In fact, the threats, the genes that, that exist in the fathers were found in the children. If, is it teaching, correction, and all that doesn't remove uh, 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 the, the Gen heredity, or what do they call it? It's a character. It's a it's a threat inside somebody. Once it is, it's natural from the father to the children. Once it's there, it is there. But Yahweh did all his best to do what to correct them in the because all those characters can be removed. That is, let's be frank. In fact, that's part of my PhD research. Where you know how a leader, how a leader could lead people, could lead an organization, and the organization will achieve results. Now, the leader has a job 
to use all the qualities, all the traits. Then when, because some of those traits, they are hidden potential. Some of them are hidden. And when now he discovers those hidden potentials and corrects them, some of them that are not in the proper, you know, uh, 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 lining to, to assist or to help the mind of the, the leader, when now they are corrected or they are removed, then the leader will be in a, a, a better stand to do what to do what is right than to lead the organization, the company, to begin to achieve results. That's exactly what Yahweh was doing in the wilderness with these people. He began to train them, train them, so, so that all those characters, all those traits, all those innate, inborn, you know, wickedness will be removed from them. Their characteristics, their traits. Remove them. Put them away. Let the good traits, character, quality of life, way to live a glorious life. Right? Yahweh call it the overall is righteousness. Put on the cloak of righteousness. Don't put on the cloak of Egypt. Don't put on the cloak of Canaanites. But unbelief didn't allow them. Many didn't pay attention. But they will do that to their pity because Yahweh said, if they were not here, they will perish in that land. As he judged the people in the same way he's going to judge them and he's going to crush them. That's what happened to them. And that's why in the, in the later days, Israelites did not hear, they, they replicated Egypt, they replicated the Canaanites. Those people, they scattered, they, they killed, they, they removed in their land. They replayed all that they were doing, all their practices, whether it's worshipping of idols, whether it's bowing to them, whether it is finding a different day to worship, and even they were worshipping all those bars, not even Yahweh, because Satan will introduce all manner of days for people to worship instead of Shabbat day. So they broke the Shabbat law. They broke the law of love, loving Yahweh. They had no relationship with Yahweh any longer. The whole laws of neighborhood was broken. That's why we read in Leviticus 18 and 19, nakedness, nakedness, don't uncover nakedness of anyone, whether it's family member, whether it's uh, Remember, whether it is neighbor's wife, neighbor's husband, don't uncover, don't sleep, don't lie with such a person. If you do that, you have broken the law, you will die. Except one's married wife or married husband. Any young one, young woman, young man, sleeping with anybody is tracking cause, death. Except the person repent. And repentance is a way of, you know, handling the gen. The, 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 the heredity that the fathers embedded on the children, removing them. That's a way of throwing them out and taking the right and righteous quality of life, characteristics of life. The, the, the very threat that Yahweh says, refine it and make sure they are righteous, they are holy and live by them. But the more Yahweh was teaching them, the more they were rebelling and rejecting Yahweh. So this morning, the word is, hear, Shama, the word. The consequences for not hearing the word of Yahweh is death. This is the whole message this morning. Now, Yahshua came. You think it's just in Old Testament that this thing was taught. No, listen to Yeshua. Matthew chapter 13. I read from verse 3. Let's pay attention. Then he spoke many things to them in parable. Many things to them in parable. Saying, behold, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside. Who is a sower? A sower. And what was he sowing? Seed. Who are the seeds he was sowing? Listen carefully. And the bears came to those that fell on the wayside or pathway. Bears came and devoured. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, 
they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop. Some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. He that has ears, let him hear what the word of Yahweh is giving to us or preaching to us via his spirit. Now, there was a, Yeshua made explanation. Let's listen to his explanation. The ones that fell or the seed that was sown on the rocky place. This is the man or woman who hears the word and immediately receives the word with joy, yet he has no root in himself. What is the root? The person's heart was not right. The person's mindset was porous and poor. The person was not ready to receive what he heard. The person joked with what he heard. The person played around with, oh, leave them, let them speak, let them talk. That is how they do. He was listening, she was listening, but a little while, you see, a little wind of Satan blow on his I forget what is, uh, that's how they preach. So what happened to the, the seed? Said, but endures, they endure only a little while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles or she stumbles and falls. Now, he who received seed among the tones is he who hears the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. Remember, every time I do say this, and people think, oh, uh, pastor, you love uh, poverty. Uh, you love, uh, you, don't, you don't want to be rich. Every time, this and that. Yahweh is not saying you should not be rich. Yahweh is not saying you should be poor. Yahweh is saying be careful with riches and, you know, or, or possession of the world. Because if you are not careful, that is what will kill you. If Yahweh doesn't give you wealth and you want to get wealth at all costs, even by defying the, the day that you worship Yahweh, you say, no, no, don't worry, let me go and get over time. They will pay me double. They will pay me try, twice or three times or five times more than I'm receiving before. You are doing what? You are killing yourself because of wealth, because of riches. You are looking at money. Money. My money has become the issue. Or somebody will say, let me do, if it's a personal work, let me give my time, do this and that and that and that, before the, I mean, Yahweh understands. What does Yahweh understand other than his word? Yahweh knows his word and he wants to believe his word, follow his word. I say Yahweh understand. Because you are breaking the law of Yahweh. You are saying Yahweh understands you breaking the law. Yahweh is seeing you breaking the law. He said he will kill you. Because you're not obedient. You will not understand. Don't because of wealth, money, or whatever, you say, oh, let me do it my own way. Yahweh will deal with the person. Yahweh said, be careful because of riches. Look at those who hear the word and look at how they mess themselves up. Now, he who received the seed among the toes is he who hears the word. He hears the word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They hear the word, not that they don't hear the word. And the cares of this world, they love this world. The, 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 the love of this world, the, the, the loss of the eyes, the, 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 the loss of the flesh, and everything that has to do with the enticement of the world, and the deceitfulness of riches choke the world, and he becomes unfruitful. The person becomes, some people are in the assembly or congregation, they are unfruitful. And their members, I don't know hearing the word. Every day they hear the word. Every Sabbath they hear the word. They are fruitful. That's why I said it has nothing to do with them. Because they will fizzle away. Let them stay like, uh, who was that man that lived? Uh, Methuselah. Lived more than others. Nearly, nearly 1,000 years. That's this kind of people. They will be there. Every now and then, you see them in the assembly, you see them in the church, you see them in the congregation. You think they are members. You think they are following. They are not following anything. If you follow them, you fall like them. Because their brain is wired into mammon, mammonism. 
And when you talk to them, they say you don't want them to be rich. Carry your richness, and one day you see the result. But he who received seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Now, this in a nutshell explains what Yeshua was talking about. Those seeds that we are sown. Those seeds as human beings. The word was sown into them. The word of Yahweh was planted into them. But when they heard it, some had nothing in them to return it. They fizzled away. Some heard it and they struggled and struggled because they don't have root. Everything was terminated. Some received the word, oh, because they were combining the word with the pleasure, the worldly pleasure. And that time seeking the pleasure of the world become paramount. Because the pleasure that the world presents and the seeking of the same pleasure is deceitful. It's something, it's like a mirage. If you see a mirage in your front, you're walking as you're approaching, it will disappear. Before you know it, it will be, you know, it will be in your front again. It will continue to move as you go closer. It will continue to move. You can't reach it. You can't hold it. That is how riches of this world behave. So if people do not understand their calling and they pursue riches, wealth, they will be swept away. They are like cotton being blown by the air. It gathers no more. Before you know it, it will be Sent, sent somewhere and sunk in a in a water or ocean. Now, there is this Bible passages, Luke chapter 8, verse 13. Matthew chapter 13, verse 32. Mark 4, verse 18. They seem to be saying the same thing. Um, Mark 4, yeah, Mark 4, 18, I think I've said that before. Let's look at um, Matthew 13. Matthew 13. So, sorry, Matthew, yeah, Matthew 13, 22. Now, he who received seed among the tongues is he who hears the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. Now, all these Bible passages I mentioned, they all identify the sentence, testifying that what Yeshua was saying is replicated amongst the apostles, amongst the disciples, among all. So nobody will say he didn't hear of this truth. That was the message that was given to them in the wilderness. The message of righteousness, holiness, which they're supposed to pursue and follow and live as glorious people, set apart people. They didn't. Yeshua came preaching the same thing. They didn't. This generation has rejected the message of old and the message of new, which are saying the same thing. The same message. Now, what do they want the Father to do? Obedience and disobedience has consequences. Let's think through this every now and then. Let's think through this. That obedience and disobedience has consequences. If we refuse to shaman, if we refuse to hear the word of Yahweh, the consequences will come. To hear the word is old covenant and the new covenant main warnings. Of all that Yahweh preached from Genesis to Revelation, it's all about hear, 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 hear his word. Hear his word and live. Hear his word and live in the land and live righteously. And prolong your days, prolong your life in the land he gave to you. And he read the, 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 all the nitty gritties, all the rules and regulations that we must follow in order to achieve living a holy life and living in the land peaceably. But the more he teach, the more we do our things. The more enemy so a lot of things in our lives. May them not be our portion any longer. May the seed of wickedness and discord and disobedience be, never be mentioned in our lives again. 
Shama is here. It is listen, listen, listen. Heed to the word of Yahweh. That is major instructions in the book of covenant. Is the major theme in the entire message handed to humanity right from Adam to today. Hear the word of Yahweh. It's a repeated refrain from generation to generation up to today. It's being repeated as we speak all over the world. Hearing and not hearing, hearing and not hearing the word, and internalizing the word. Hearing and not making use of what one hears. Hearing and not living by the word and practicing it. Now, it's, you know, supposed a big judgment awaiting for the those who hear and will not want to believe or do what it says. At a point in human history, Yahweh sent some prophets to make the people hear the word, like Jeremiah, like Ezekiel, like Hosea, like Amos, on and on and on. At some point, he sent prophets to make the people not to hear the word again. For instance, who? Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 6. You can't believe it. Yahweh will not give somebody opportunity all his lifetime to continue to waste his time teaching him, teaching him, teaching him, or teaching her. No, 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 no. At some point, Yahweh will stop. And Yahweh will send whoever he will send to go and block that person from entering his kingdom. Yes, because somebody who is pretending following Yahweh, pretending following Yahweh, if Yahweh will not stop the person, block the person, and cut the person off, the person may intrude into the kingdom. Yahshua gave an example when he, he was citing one. He said, when the children of Yahweh gathered, and all of a sudden, the master appeared in, and he saw a man who was putting a garment, a dangerous, terrible garment. He was looking odd amongst other people. And he was quickly spotted out. Man, how did you enter into this place? Who invited you? And he was buying hands and legs and thrown away. So Yahweh is working in advance to stop people who will intrude. No intruder will enter. He's doing everything. So that's why when he send his shepherd, his pastors, he also at times send pastors or messengers or prophets that will stop them. Some pastors or prophets are sent to stop those who want to intrude at all costs. Look at Eli, Eli, Elijah. No, I'm sorry, Isaiah. When Isaiah was before Isaiah was called, he was sent to build. He was sent to, to, to create. He was sent to bring the people in. He was sent to preach the good news that the people will hear and repent and come to Yahweh. But on along along, when now Yahweh said, Who will send me? Who will send? Who will we send and who will go for us into these people, into Israel, to teach them? Because Yahweh told them in the wilderness they didn't hear. And in that, in that land again, Yahweh want to begin to teach them. He couldn't find anybody. All of a sudden, this man, Isaiah, heard. Isaiah said, here I am, send me. Father, send me. Yahweh said, okay, since you are ready, I know you've been working hard. You've been teaching them. But <laughs> now, stop building them. Stop doing anything that will help them enter. Because they don't want to hear. They don't want to enter. They are seen. They are not ready to, to see to enter. Therefore, their eyes will be blinded. Their ears will be blocked. Their heart will be seared. So, do not preach for them to enter. Preach for their destruction. Read, let us read it. Maybe you have read it. You think one is making it up. Now, Isaiah thought he was a righteous man, though he was doing the work of Yahweh, he was preaching the good news, but he said, Yahweh said, Seraphim, take life code and touch his tongue so that he become clean, holy. So Isaiah now entered in the, on the side of holiness. And now, what is the message? What message will I send to these people? Now listen to what the conversation between him and Yahweh. After his okay. mouth was, okay. Isaiah chapter 6, after his mouth was touched, Isaiah chapter 6, and now read from verse, verse 7. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away, and your sin purged. Also, I heard the voice of Yahweh saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? 
listen to the conversation. Then I said, as I said, here am I, send me, verse 9. And he said, go and tell these people, which are the people, Israel, Israelites, go and tell them. Keep on hearing. Are you hearing that? Keep on, Israel, keep on, because they have been hearing right from Egypt to the wilderness, into the land of Canaan. They have been hearing. What were they doing with it? Now, it's time for Yahweh to stop them from hearing. Keep on hearing, but do not understand. A blockade. Do not, whatever, look, whatever that is giving you pleasure to love the world, have a second thought about it. And run away. And run away. Follow Yahweh. Or else, there will be a time, there will be a quench. Yahweh will put a blockhead. The person will go nowhere again. And the front end, the person, even the person wouldn't know. He would think he is part of the kingdom. And he will be a, 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 a assembly goer, a congregation attendant. Every now and then, he is mingling with the people of Yahweh. But he doesn't know he's been removed because the person is just a hearer and not a doer. Keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. They will be seeing. What they were doing, they will continue to do, but Yahweh has blocked them. Yahweh has stopped them. Now, there is instruction in verse 10. Listen to it. Make the heart of these people dull, and their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and return and be healed. You know, Yahweh has put a boundary. There's limit to which Yahweh will tolerate them. That we say, I will no longer tolerate them. They have reached their end. Because if we do anything to allow them to pass through, when they enter into the kingdom, they are going to be a problem. Lucifer is going to be better than them. So we wouldn't allow that. Verse 11. Then I said, Yahweh, how long and... You see? Isaiah here was asking Yahweh, how long will I preach this message of stopping them from entering the kingdom? How long will it last? Listen to what Yahweh told him. And he answered, until the cities are laid waste and without inhabitants, the houses are without a man, the land is utterly desolate. Yahweh, Yahweh has removed men far away and the and the forsaken places are many in the midst of the land. Yahweh said to the end, until I destroy all of them, until I remove them from the land of Canaan. Because they, because of them, I love them so much that because of them, I cut off the Canaanites. And now they have become Canaanites, and they're living like Canaanites. And I warn them, if you do what those Canaanites are doing, you will be swept away. So it's their time to be to be cut off like the Canaanites. Yahweh is never a partial father. It's never an injustice. You see, he, he, he removed the Canaanites because they were in, iniquitous, they were evil, they were wicked. And his people entered there and they began to do what the, the same Canaanites were doing. And they said, Yahweh, we leave them. Yahweh said, no, whoever he be, the person must be crushed. The person must be removed because he's not a partial father. So, as I got a mandate, mandate to preach the good, the, the news that you people will be cut off from the land. That land that was their kingdom, they will be cut off. The same message is given to the children of Israel today, and from generation to generation, the same message is preached. And in this letter, there's everything will reverse. How? The prophets also preach that as Yahweh visited them in the land of Canaan and removed them, scattered them, the same way he will visit them in this letter, then when Yahshua will be coming to restore them back to the land. Those that are not hearing today, they will never, never enter that land. The way he separated the wheat from the chaff, the same way he will do it. At a point, some people who are hearing, 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 but they're not doing, they will be stopped. They will not get away. 
And the preachers will continue to preach to stop them until Yeshua will return. Or by the time Yeshua will be coming in, they will be cut off because there will be war, there will be famine, there will be tribulation, there will be all manner of things that will even deal with them. That is coming. This is message of tomorrow. As it was in the time of old, so it will reverse and become the same thing will be happening. Because the same human being, the same human mind, the same system of human way of doing things, they don't change. They remain the same. But those who have worked in their inner being, inner threat, inner character, and worked on them, refined them by the word of Yahweh, they will be saved. They will be saved. Are you part of them? Are you part of them? So Yahweh has made sure that the disobedient people will never enter the kingdom. This message calls for carefulness and obedience to hear the word of Yahweh, as he may block those who refuse from hearing. Obedience has great blessings and gift of life. That is those who hear the word of Yahweh. There is blessings, there is gift of life, and even prolonged life. Why disobedience has terrible consequences of cost and death. Which one of these two do you choose? Deuteronomy chapter 30, 11 to 20. That is where Yahweh again replicated and repeated all these. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, 1 to 5, and Deuteronomy 7, 1 to 7, Leviticus 18, 1 to 6, Psalm 106, 19 to 28, which I mentioned earlier, Yahweh our Father calls us to Shema, that is to hear his word. His word is all the commandments he gave us in the Bible or the covenant book. His word was given as Torah. That is the Hebrew word for instruction or law. His word or commandments or instruction is summarized in Exodus chapter 21 to 17 and in Deuteronomy 5 uh, verses 7 to 21 as the commandments. Others of his word are those spoken by the prophets. See Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, where he said he did not come to destroy the law and the prophets. And those that were spoken by Yahshua Messiah himself in the New Covenant or the New Testament. See Hebrews chapter 8, verse 5, uh, verse 6, and Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15. His word was taught by Yahshua till today. So his word in the old covenant and in the new covenant book are the same never never separated they are one and the same word the same message message of righteousness message of holiness message of repenting from our sins correcting our character molding our character causing yahweh is one molding our character if we hear if we are not hearing the car your character can never be molded when you hear you submit when you hear, you obey. When you hear, you commit yourself, you love Yahweh and the fear. Once you begin to fear, Yahweh, Yahweh take over. The whole rest of action is centered on his, his workings. He work it out via his Holy Spirit. That's how we are delivered. They are not cancelled. His word is not cancelled. His word is not destroyed. His word is not nailed to the cross as they preach today in the Gentile world. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 and verse 19. He said, you must hear the word, you must do the word, you must teach the word. Those that hear the word and teach it, they will be called the greatest in the kingdom. His word are called law in English, English language. The will of our father is to obey and hear his word, to love him, to fear him. When we do this, we will be doing the will of the father and we will be showcasing love to him. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13, they say that the whole duty of man is to do what? To fear Yahweh and to keep his commandments. And Yahshua said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Whose commandment? The commandments of the Father. Now, the consequence is what? Death to those who are not keeping it. Cannot emphasize it you know, enough. The consequence of not keeping or hearing or doing what Yahweh says, the person will surely perish. Sooner or later, the person will be afflicted with sicknesses or, or plague of Egypt. And for sickness or you know diseases of Egypt or the plague that the person will encounter, the person will die. Therefore, 
Obedience to Yahweh's word is express way to live a life without sickness. Even when sickness comes, Yahweh will heal the person. Psalm 103 verse 3, Exodus 15 verse 26, Exodus 7 verse 15 is the word of Yahweh. Yahweh doesn't lie. Hold to the word of Yahweh. Obey him and hold to his word. He will do exactly what he said. That is our father will serve. That is how we know him, and that is how he wants us to know him. Because he gives us, we are terribly idol worshippers who held Israel captives and enslaved them and did not allow them to go home. Yahweh plagued them with different sicknesses and death. Exodus chapter 9, verse 14. Yahweh said, because these people are what they are, then he has to plague them in order to deliver his people. And Yahweh is promising his people, if you keep to my Torah, if you keep my commandments, none of the sicknesses of Egypt will be falling on you. And when any sickness comes before even you pray, I will answer. That is Yahweh's own you know, side of the bargain. Yahweh is there to help you because he will never fail in this covenant. So anyone who lives a life of disobedience, who refuses to listen to the word of Yahweh or the commandments of Yahweh will soon be destroyed. Evil will be following the person until the person is destroyed. But those who obey our Father's word, he loves them and he will keep them safe and cause their lives to be prolonged at all times. See Leviticus 23, 26, 1 to 13. Yahweh heal obedient person from sickness or plagues. Psalm 103, verse 3, and delivers them from all their troubles. Psalm 30, 34, 17 to 19. Yahweh fights the person's battle. Yah on battle, Yahweh will fight because you are obedient, you fear him, you keep his word, you love him. Yahweh will fight your battle physically and spiritually. Spiritual, do you know physical battles? Most times, enemy may be targeting you to hit you, to deal with you. The enemy set down or the, his spirit or his um, fallen angels or those demons will send human beings like you to attack you, knowingly or unknowingly. Playfully, before you know it, one thing will lead to them, another physical fight, physical trouble, problem will come. But then, if you are obedient and if you fear Yahweh, you wake up that day, Yahweh will give you direction, give you instruction, guide you. You may not know. You may not, Yahweh, Yahweh may not tell you that, oh, in the afternoon, somebody will be waiting to kill you. Yahweh will avert that. Yahweh, if it is work, Yahweh may say, okay, today don't go to work. Do so, 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 and so. Before you know it, you'll find something to, to be doing, and you take permission from work that day. Or Yahweh may even delay you from going to work if it's accident they have set against you. By the time you get there, the accident has happened and you pass your way. Yeah, we defend you physically, spiritually. How far do you know about that? The truth remains, obedience is what Yahweh is calling. Yahweh is not saying, oh, you wait and see. No, 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 no. Yahweh is not just trying to showcase his power, and show us this and that. No, 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 no. He saves us 24 hours. Every day, every split second, every minute, every hour. Every day, every week. Every month, every year, he keep on saving us. He's not showing us. In fact, if he's to be showing us every day, what? In fact, at times we may not even stand up from the bed because we say the world is a dangerous place to 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 walk through or to go by. So here we fight the battle every day, every day, every minute, every split second. All you need to do is obey, obey. Here we heal obedient person from sickness or plagues. He keeps you safe from every danger that will come your way. Yahweh fight your battle and give you victory. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 17. Jehoshaphat, three nations were to overthrow them overnight. It was told Je Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat panicked, but he must have courage. He said, Yahweh is my strength. He went and began to fast, pray, called his people. And before you know it, Yahweh said, the battle is not your own. It's mine. Now get to, they began to sing and praise Yahweh. By the time they got there in the morning, all their enemies were dead. The same thing we read in Isaiah chapter 37. Hezekiah was, you know, told that the enemy has come to take over the, uh, uh, the, the land of Jerusalem. And he called Isaiah, 
Come and help oh, before these people will take over the land. And as I told him, look, Yahweh has seen what is going on. The same signature, the way he came, he will, he will die. He will die. All his soldiers will die. Overnight, Yahweh sent one angel, one eight, five thousand soldiers were wiped out overnight. These are physical enemies that came to destroy them. Who fought the battle? It was Yahweh. It was Yahweh. Let us not underrate who called us. What he does and what he sees, we don't see. What he knows, we don't know. All we need to do is obedience. Yahweh opens the door of salvation to the obedient people. John chapter 10, 9 to 16, Titus 3, verse 5, John 3, 36, Romans 6, 23, John 14, verse 6. In the days we were in ignorance, that is worshipping in Christianity, in Islam, in Judaism, and other religions, Yahweh overlooked our ignorance, Yahweh overlooked our lack of knowledge. But now that we hear the truth, now that he's telling us to repent and turn to him and live in the glorious life he's given us, he said he will deliver us. In as much as we forsake disobedience, forsake sin, Acts chapter 17, verse 30, once Yahweh speaks, he back his word up with the text he wrote and kept for us to read. And if you, if you fear him, if you obey him, if you love him, you must believe his word. And if you believe his word, it will work out for you. That is what he's instructing us to do. Yahweh himself gives those who repent and return to him salvation. He gives them life, even prolonged life. And he has made a way that in these latter days, when the trouble will ensue all over the earth, he will keep his own people safe. So when the wars come to the wars, he will take them through the wilderness. He will keep them there safe. Lions, bears, all manner of, you know, uh, 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 warring animals. None of them will come near. Yahweh will lead them as he led Israelites from Egypt to the land of Canaan. For 40 years, people don't ask, how, did, how were they protected from rain? How were they protected from sun, scorching sun? How were they protected from snow? How were they protected from windy environment, windy situation? How were they protected from the nations that we are merely hearing that Israelites were coming, they were ready to fight them, to kill them? How were they protected from these nations? How did Yahweh keep them there at night, sustain them, feeding them, watering them? I mean, how were they led? And we sat down and asked ourselves all this. If we do, hmm, we'll be drawing close to Yahweh because he will open our eyes and our ears to showcase to us how he led us. And this, the same way he said he's going to lead his people in these later days. That is the thing that we are not even looking at. The same thing that happened to the fathers, how he led them out of Egypt, the same way he's going to lead them out again. The children, the descendants are going to come out in the same way. In fact, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 11 to 16, he showcased that what he did for them, bringing them out of Egypt, the same thing is going to repeat. Two seas or two rivers are, that are going to hinder Israel. Yahweh said he's going to take care of those seas or rivers. One is from Africa, Egypt. Another one is from Asia, river Euphrates. Those are the two seas that Yahweh mentioned. And this through these routes, because he will take them through those seas or waters, he will pass his people to return back to the land. Now, what Yahweh has planned, because he's going to be so much, and that's why he split the movement into two. Why Yahweh is giving us this advance notice? So that it will not appear like even when Israelites were about to move from Egypt, when they were told, Moses has to prove that Yahweh has come on board. Moses has to prove that it is Yahweh, the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, when they understood that they bowed to worship Yahweh, before they agreed, it was unbelief, 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 unbelief. Then Yahweh don't want us to enter into that unbelief. That's why he gave us all this advanced notice, advanced information, so that we begin to prepare ourselves. Many of us are not prepared. Many of us so love the world. Many of us worship Yahweh when it is convenient for us. 
Many of us want to do what we want to do when we want, not as Yahweh wants you to follow him or to serve him. Serving Yahweh is a full-time life assignment. It's something you do day in, day out. It's not because if you wait a split second, a split second is enough for Satan to plant evil seed and the person may not escape it. What if, if the person is not close to Yahweh and Yahweh says, oh, this person, I have put a blockade, no more. Then Satan will grab the person, eat the person, and the person's life will be right off from the you know, book of life. Do not serve Yahweh as you will, as you want. Serve him as he commands you to serve. And you see how Yahweh is going to handle your enemies, handle your problems, handle your pains, handle your... Yahweh will lead... Before issues of life will want to engulf you, Yahweh will tell you in advance and tell you what to do. I mean, is it not a joy that you have such a father? Is it not a joy? Before we went to Burundi, we are called, we are told that Burundians were having eye inflammation. Check now, that eye inflammation is not there. Yahweh performed the wonders. Yahweh performed the miracle. By the time we got after two days or thereabout, we cried to Yahweh, rain fell. Rain, 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 rain. It was like the rain that came down did it. Yahweh knows what to do. And Yahweh wants those who work for him all. As Yahweh is teaching you his word and to follow him, there are many who are, it's like the seed that is being sown. Many are hearing, but they are not ready. But he still wants his people to go and to, to hammer his word in their ears. Who knows? By reason of you obeying Yahweh, such people may be saved. Yahweh is looking for you. Yahweh is looking for me. Today, as we speak, many people are crying, come over to us and help us. In India, in Philippines, this assembly of the living Yahweh, people are saying, come and help us. In Africa, people are crying. And you are there, you are dilly-dallying. And even your own money that you can send Yahweh, I want to use this to do this work. You are holding it so tight. And the work of Yahweh is trying there to be done. Let us have a second thought of what we are doing. Let us have a second thought because the, there is no more time. Anybody that tell you that the, the world we live is Uhuru, the world we live is Edorado, nothing will happen tomorrow. We are in charge, we are in control. The person is deceiving you. The days, the age is numbered. The days of men, mankind on earth is numbered. The days of deliverance, the coming deliverance, it has been set. Is in the hand of Yahweh. The timetable is in the hands of Yahweh. The date is in the hands of Yahweh. But if Yahweh is warning you to stand up, wake up, and begin to do what he asks you to do, so that your brothers will be delivered, your brothers who are not hearing this truth, or who have not been baptized, will be baptized, and you are struggling, you are not doing what you're supposed to do, Yahweh may hold you responsible tomorrow. May Yahweh deliver us. May Yahweh hear us. May we have ears to hear. And may we have the heart to repent. May the commandments of Yahweh enter into our heart. And may Yahweh look at us and call us sons and daughters of his. May the agents of Satan that is all over the world working to stop those who are hearing the truth today, may they not be sent against you. May you not receive the agent of blockade. May you not receive the message, the word that says stop his eyes, stop his ears, stop his heart from perceiving, from moving forward. May you not run this race and run it in vain. May you run and run and finish well. May you run and enter the kingdom. May you run and run with many and many and many that Yahweh will be saved, will save through you. May your work, may your labor not be in vain. May Yahweh prolong your life. May Yahweh keep you to do your, do his will and to glorify his name. Because what we do, as Yahweh sent us, bring glory to him, bring blessings to him. Yahweh receives blessings as well. What we do, we are created to bring glory, bring blessing, bring honor, bring everything to him. Even when Satan is seen that you are working hard, Satan will be jealous. Satan will know, indeed, Yahweh is receiving that glory that he, Satan, wanted to take. And that makes Yahweh happy. 
May Yahweh be happy with you. May Yahweh rejoice with you. May every calculation of great tribulation and the wrath of Yahweh that is to plunge the wicked and destroy the wicked, may it not be your portion. May it not come your way. May calculation to sweep the wicked not be mentioned in your life. May you not be part of the counting of those who will be destroyed. Who are those who are hearing, but they are not doing. May that not be your portion. May Yahweh save you. May Yahweh keep you. May Yahweh help you. May Yahweh multiply you. May Yahweh lead you to enter the kingdom without any hindrance in Yeshua's name. Hallelujah.